My name is Rami Herrick. I'm an associate professor of mechanical engineering at the University of South Carolina. The University of South Carolina's McNair Center is a, a consortium of different research aspects that are important for the aerospace industry, as well as to induce innovation and induce um, research in the state of South Carolina. This is a place where industry and education meets at the same location. So what happens, our students work on real-life industrial projects, and as such, they are getting their training and they are getting their engineering skills perfected with this interaction and with this friction with the industry. And therefore, at the end, once they graduate, they are job ready from day one. South Carolina is extremely well positioned not to only lead manufacturing in the local area, but really on a global scale. It has, as a state, we have all the qualifications that we need from, in terms from fundamental infrastructures, uh, abilities, and um, however, what I see that the state of South Carolina needs to be doing is uh, more focused on topics that are relevant for industries of the future. We are super well positioned to actually lead the world on this endeavor. Uh, this needs some cutting edge policies. This will need some courage from lawmakers to actually make fundamental changes to allow smart manufacturing to trickle more and more into facilities within South Carolina. I perceive this as two parallel paths where you have advanced manufacturing that is based on physical processes, meeting smart manufacturing that is based on uh, the digital world. And South Carolina is more than well positioned to lead that effort on the global scale. I would like to believe that my method of problem solving is very involving. I, I like to believe that um, the team that I have, so there's two sides of, uh, to the answer to how I tackle problem solving. One side of it is a little bit at, um, before the start of the problem solving is, I make sure that the people that are in my team, they are um, hand selected, they have, been, they have been given all opportunities to actually make sure that uh, they grow within their own boundary at the same time as being part of the team. And then the second thing, I believe in involving people. I fundamentally believe whether I'm doing a research proposal or we're writing a paper or we are even uh, mentoring a new student coming to the team, I believe, just like, a, just like we say, it takes a village to raise a kid, I believe it takes the whole team to lift someone up and get them to uh, the level where they are part of the team and part of the problem solving. The method for problem solving is twofold, making sure that the team from the get-go is ready and equipped, and the second one is involving people. So I believe it is unfair to ask people to be self-motivated. I believe that this is unfair. Um, it is not correct to say, I want self-motivated people because self-motivation cannot come if you don't make sure that the environment is right for people, that the project they're working on is exciting, that the atmosphere and acceptance within the team for each individual liberty is there. So self-motivation can come uh, at a second stage, if you want, once you set the boundaries of a good working, a harmonious working group for the individual that you are working with. Now, the only thing that you cannot do is give passion to people. And for me, when I'm talking with someone, I fundamentally believe if I ask them a technical question and they don't know the answer to it, that is totally fine. Because people can learn, people are made to be susceptible to increase their knowledge and to learn if given the right environment and the right boundaries. So I look for passionate people. I look for people that um, they, have, they have a desire they, they, they want to be part of something, and then I give them all the spectrum to actually hone their skills and make sure that they fit perfectly within the team. I define innovation as something that is fundamentally functional, however, also brings this flavor of, uh, for humanity to elevate the whole society. One of the biggest challenges for innovation is, um, is I wanna say, doing innovation at the right time. 
So innovation, we can make the most cutting edge new product that humans or the society is not ready for and it will be uh, shut down. I believe that manufacturing operates on the timeline of uh, society and that manufacturing should answer society uh, within the concept of just in time, just in sequence, at the right time. I believe that industry should trust more academia, especially when they see certain entities like the University of South Carolina that is interested in the relationship. Here at the University of South Carolina, and like no other place, we have an Office of Economic Engagement. And that office has the sole purpose of matchmaking industry with researchers. We are having a great success in the Future of Factories platform because the University of South Carolina has decided to proactively engage with industry. So I would like for industry to actually come visit us and take a bet on us for several reasons. The first one is we're doing a good job recently. I'm giving myself a tap on the back. The second one is at one point, the industry needs to hire skilled workforce. If they don't engage in the discussion with academia and they don't tell academia how they want their future workforce to look like, we will be graduating people that are not job ready. And this won't be for the benefit for our students because they will not be employable. And this will not be for the benefit for the industry because they will not be able to find the skilled labor. So I would say, let's engage in the discussion, let's continue the discussion, and let industry uh, sponsor people working within the industry to participate at all level of academia, whether through sponsoring senior design projects for students, whether through mentoring, whether through going through the industrial advisory board. We are not researchers sitting behind the desk with the target of publishing a paper. We want to make a change in society, and therefore this change has to be meaningful for industry and the society. Three tips for researchers to make a bridge towards uh, research. And these tips come from personal experience. The first one is engage when it comes to uh, senior design and undergraduate education of students during their last year with the industrial partners. You would be surprised, and this is from personal experience, how many times this can be transformed to become a research project. So starting with a little problem, demonstrating to industry that academia can be an answer to their problems through a little project can trickle down and can, can become big and become a major uh, research project down the road. The second one is participate within your own professional community. I myself, I am in the Society of Manufacturing Engineers and in SAMPI, I participate in the meetings. In those meetings, there are always B2B meetings and face-to-face -face meetings that they are trying to connect researchers with uh, industry. I have found enormous profit from going to those meetings, interacting with industrialists and communicating with them. And actually, a lot of my ideas for innovation happens while I'm discussing with people and we're discussing for the future. And then I come down and I start writing proposals on them. So this is for uh, the second tip. The third tip is just look around you. Make a simple search of what industries are around you, wherever you are located, and just go visit them. Try to find someone, send emails out, visit them, and a little bit of energy when it comes to that, it will pay back off enormously. I am Rami Herrick. Those were my notes on innovation. <laughs>